Here we are at Cooper MMA. I'm Mark Gilston. This is my friend Skyler. And today I'd like to talk about Soto Makikomi, the outer wraparound throw. This is a very powerful judo technique. Uh, it's usable in BJJ as well as judo. A great takedown. Um, it can be used gi or no gi equally well in either case. There are, however, quite a number of typical things that people do which make it harder to throw or which give up your back. So I want to uh, emphasize ways of doing this throw where you're not going to get your back taken. If we just look at the basic throw, so I'm stepping in, I'm coming over his arm, bringing this arm forward. My arm is high. I'm going to basically do a shoulder roll. Let me do it at speed here. The finishing position, you have a straight arm bar and you never want to give it up. So once you're down on the ground here, you can grab your gi if you have a gi and you finish with this straight arm bar. I'll look into the details of that a little bit later. So, one of the things that uh, um, mistakes that a lot of people make. They come in and this arm comes down. If this arm is down, when I try and roll, it's very awkward for me. If I actually go down to the side, he's going to bring this arm around. He's not off balance. So I just end up falling down and it's pretty lousy. So it's critically important that this arm is up high and my arm is high. I'm leading with this. You'll notice that he has to move or go up on his toes. Now, just like hip throws, it's important for me to get low. Skylar's taller than me, so that's an advantage for me. But I want to get under him. He's going to fly that way. When he comes down, there's no way that he's going to be able to scramble back to his back before I gain control. So in slow motion, I've maintained, even in slow motion, I've maintained my control the entire way through. And notice that I'm still pulling up on this arm. My back is against his ribs. So try turning into me. It's almost impossible for him to do that. So once more at speed. Even if I'm overturning like this, I still have control of his arm. He can't turn into me. Go ahead. All right, so let's look at that arm bar here. I want this to be very, very tight. If, if he tries to defend by bending this arm, I reach over for his hand, pull the hand, slide it down. There is a wrist lock here. If your school allows wrist locks, you can apply it. I don't like wrist locks myself. I think they're a little too dangerous. So I just use it to guide him. I want to make sure that his pinky is going to be facing the floor. So I turn his hand and then bring it straight down. If he brings his hand to, to lock it from the front, the technique is the same. Because I have such a tight lock on his elbow 
And again, it's not coming from strength. It's coming from relaxing and, and just putting all my body weight, letting my body weight rest on his arm while keeping a nice tight grip here. So his arm is helpless. And his body is locked into place because of no space between my back and his rib cage. If he tries to create space here by moving out, I will follow him. I do not want to let him have that space. That's the first thing he needs to escape. If he tries to grab my leg with this, tries to hook over my leg, I just move it out of his way. So this is also a nice pin. And in judo, I can go to Ura Gatami, the rear hold from here. And he is not comfortable right now. So the most typical entry for Sotomaki Komi comes when he is breaking my grip. He doesn't like my collar grip, so he breaks it around, pull, and lock up. makes it a very, very useful throw. Uh, there's a natural tendency with this grip break to come under for Ippon Seoi. It's, they're both perfectly reasonable. I find though that going over the top is a little more comfortable. Similarly, if I don't like the grip he has on my sleeve, let me turn that this way. I will use the grip break to get rid of this and now it's natural for me to come in for Sotomaki Komi. So he's got a strong sleeve grip here. It's bothering me. He's using it to pull me off balance. If you go back, this kind of thing can be extremely irritating and it's obvious that he's setting up for a technique. So I will use that, this over the top, in and pull him forward. So let's do the whole throw that way. I've set up for Soto Makikomi, but I haven't quite gotten enough of that pull. He starts to block me with this leg. This is where Hane Makikomi becomes a critical technique. Down, push from the inside. I still want that forward momentum. So I come in, he blocks. And Hane Makikomi, the bottom of my foot is on the inside. Ideally, I like to thrust with the edge of my foot, but often it's inside. Try and keep your toes up when you do either Hanegoshi or Hanemakikomi. One advantage of it is because of the power of the leg, you don't have to have as much of a forward pull. But it's still important to keep this arm high. If this arm is down, I'm gonna run into the same problems I ran into if it was down in Sotomaki Komi. Hi. It doesn't take much. 
Another reaction he can have is to get very low. Just totally drop his weight down. In this case, going forward is a mistake. Reach and turn. In this case, I'm doing Osodogake. Uh, be careful that when you, you don't want to hit his leg in current judo rules. BJJ, you hit as low as you can. But just touching the waist is enough. Okay, it's a bit of an overview of Sotomaki Komi and the various different follow-ups. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe to our channel, Serioku Zenyo, meaning maximum efficiency. If you click on the bell, you will get the videos as soon as they are posted. Thank you, Skylar.